Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. So in this episode, what we're going to take a look at is the start of building our laser cutter. Uh, one of the things we've mentioned in some previous episodes is we want to uh, build the laser cutter for the lab. Uh, we've decided on doing a laser diode based version. So uh, first place to start with is the laser cutting hand itself. Now, one of the things that we also decided was we're going to basically go for the biggest reasonable diode type laser that we can and uh, right now in the market uh, basically that is a two watt diode laser so what we have here is the components that we need to build the diode head or cutting component so one of the first pieces that's important to have is some good uh, heat sink compound we'll talk about that more in a minute uh, an actual aluminum housing heat sink with focusing element which happens to be inside of here. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Also the laser driver which is critically important. So uh, this is a, uh, basically a 1 to 2 watt laser driver so it'll drive up to 2 watts and that's what our laser is. And then the most important thing, the laser diode itself. And I'm not sure if you can see it in here but it's uh, rather small. And this actually is the most expensive part out of this entire uh, kit, if you will. Uh, the diode, laser diode itself is about 40 bucks. Uh, notice it is in static sensitive packaging. It is static sensitive. So uh, we'll do a video on kind of assembling all this, but uh, first video is going to be talking about uh, the pieces, how they all come together, and if you want to do a project, uh, you know, how you would go about it. Uh, but be forewarned, as it's very clear here, this will cut. A 2 watt laser is a serious laser. So uh, it will cut flesh, it will cut a lot of things, it will blind instantly. So uh, a lot of care needs to be uh, used with this. So you use this on your own. So talking about this, so this was, um, you know, some of the costs here. Uh, we, we could we could have bought a pre-finished laser, 2 watt laser, for around $150. Um, which is not actually too bad. However, what we decided, the route we decided to go is to build one ourselves because, hey, that's part of the fun of it, right? And it is about half the price. So, this tube of uh, uh, high grade uh, heat sink compound was like a dollar. Uh, this unit with the fan, focusing element. Now, inside here is a brass, uh, I forget the TO number of it, uh, but I think it's the TO19, etc housing with a glass lens. Critically important. Plastic lens, this laser will melt it. So, uh, cri of critical importance. Also, if you notice that this has a dust housing, so the, 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 laser is at, the laser actually ends up inside of here, about halfway up, and this is to keep uh, other dust and debris out. So, um, uh, again, we'll do a video as we start to assemble this, how it all comes together. And then obviously a fan to keep the laser and heat sink cool. There are mounting holes to mount to the uh, linear movements that we will build later. Uh, so again, very important piece. This was about $17 from eBay ordered from China. The laser driver. Uh, this is a 12-volt laser driver. Uh, one of the reasons I chose it, it was a 12-volt. It was fairly heavy duty. Uh, it's a variable output. Uh, so it makes it kind of nice that we can, once we get the laser set up, we can start this laser out at... Uh, Actually, I think a little bit below 1 watt, work it up to 2 watts to see how it does. Uh, it also has outputs for pulse, uh, I believe, um, uh, the equivalent of pulse with modulation. So basically, you have your inputs at 12 volts DC. You have a fan output, which we can connect this fan to to drive the fan also. You have your laser output and then your ITL, which I... I'm assuming it's like a pulse with modulation, so you can control the intensity of the laser from a program, so you could, uh, uh, you know, adjust it to, you know, burn, you know, from various degrees, whether you wanted to etch or actually cut material. And then the magic piece itself is a laser diode itself. Um, I didn't think about, I don't know if I mentioned, this is about, this was about $11 off of eBay. You know, so, so basically, you know, you're talking, you know, sub-30 here, and then the laser diode itself was about 40 bucks shipped from Bulgaria. I believe it is a they're they're selling them on eBay quite a bit. Uh, they're around 35 bucks, around 40 bucks shipped. Uh, you know, so again, you're looking at about 70 dollars U.S. sitting here um, in front of you. And you got to kind of put it all together with a little bit of solder. 
Uh, however, the um, the version that you could buy off of eBay pre-built at two watts is uh, I think around 153 plus shipping. So in, in essence, it's about half the price if you want to build it yourself. Um, I, I wanted to do it myself because I kind of want to see how it all works, and I've never done this before. Uh, one of the things we're going to look at doing is, is probably mounting the, the laser uh, control on top of the housing, sort of like this. So all the power comes in and all the control here is, is, is done. We will probably desolder these little white coupler things and just solder the wires directly into them. And again, I, I do a video as I assemble that because one of the pieces, since this is static sensitive, I want to show a little bit about handling the diode and mounting the, the diode in the housing itself. So that will be the next video. Uh, did order some laser goggles from um, eBay. They haven't come yet. So when they come, I'll start the assembly process because uh, I, I don't think the assembly process will take uh, very long at all. Probably a half hour to kind of put all this stuff together, get the diode in here, get this all soldered together. And uh, you know, one of the things with the glasses, this, the glasses will not protect you from a direct hit of this. It's basically from the reflective hits of this that the, the glasses may protect you. And I say may, I mean, obviously, if it bounces off a mirror, you're going to take almost a two-watt two, two watt direct hit. So, again, I cannot stress, be very, very careful if you decide to do this. This is very, very dangerous. Also, make sure you get the right glasses. Um, this, happened, this diode happens to be 445 nanometers. It's a blue diode, so you need to get glasses for that range. Get get uh, at least reasonably quality glasses for this, you know, not something for $2.99 off of eBay. Get some of the better glasses. Should maybe run you about $18 U.S. Uh, to do this. Also, when this is operating, you you want to also uh, make sure you have them on because again, even if you have a dark background, any type of reflective burst from this into the eye is going to be a problem. So. Uh, Everybody recommends doing this in a closed container. Um, I don't know if I'll, uh, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, definitely wear the glasses and, and, and definitely have it in a controlled situation without uh, people wandering around it, staring at it. So, uh, again, because it is very dangerous. Um, and I also would include pets in that. So, uh, that basically summarizes the first video of this. Again, wanted to share the parts, what we're going to do for assembly. Uh, we'll start another video when we start the assembly to show how it all goes together how we get the diode in the TO housing, how we handle the static sensitivity of the diode. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about why we need a power regulator to control the di uh, diode rather than just feed it direct power from a power source. Um, and a couple other things. So, see you in the next video.